How's it going folks? Thought I'd start off today with a bit of a look at the very uh, sleepy fish down in there. Those are our jade perch. Uh, not very active at the moment because we've still got fairly low water temps here. Um, last night the actual atmospheric temp went down to 2 degrees Celsius and the water from memory is, well when I came down earlier is sitting at 16. Oh it's gone up a smidge. It's 17 degrees uh, Celsius and that is because we have a heater. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it. Oh yes you can. You can see the little heater bobbing around down there in the fish tank itself. Um, so yeah, they're not really feeding that well. Uh, every day I'm tossing in a little bit of feed and they're not really smashing it um, as they normally would. Normally they demolish uh, a couple of hundred grams in no time flat. At the moment, uh, probably about half a handful takes them about three quarters of an hour to eat. Whatever isn't eaten after that time, I remove from the tank. Um, so as a result, we are not getting a lot of nutrients uh, through to this side of the system, the uh, hydroponic side. Uh, nitrogen wise, more than enough nitrogen. Um, that's the main element that makes plants green. But as you can see from the chlorosis or yellowing between the veins of the leaf here, uh, it, this, the plants are deficient. Uh, normally the way I run my system is I feed a lot of feed to the fish. I remove the solids so they don't foul up the beds over time through my little radial flow settler here. I'll uh, link up there if you want to learn how to make this little jobby. And those solids don't go to waste. I normally pump them out through that black line there down to our lime tree and a few other bits and pieces down there. And after we finish landscaping, there'll be a different bed there. But that's normally where those solids would go so they don't go to waste. Now, because I'm having issues with deficiencies, I thought I'd uh, finally um, <laughs> pull the pin on a, a mineralization system, which is basically very similar to a compost brewer. And this is the little jobby I've made up here. Uh, roughly 220 litre drum with some air stones going in there. And those air stones are bubbling away in the water I cleaned out from the radial flow filter just before. I was planning on videoing the whole schmozzle, giving you a bit of a look, but unfortunately um, some wombat didn't press record and only caught the tail end of cleaning that out. Not only that, but my little pump here has burnt out. So I found another little inline pump. Um, this one actually ran our very first aquaponic system and it's a little sun sun jobby. So that's what I'll be using to move the water from the radial flow, or the, the foul water, the mucky water from the radial flow settler up into the digester next time around. So um, there will be a video on that. I'm just showing you how it's all set up and how it works. Uh, to give you a quick rundown, you've already seen the air that goes in there. The um, settler gets filled with muck. Um, the air will go down there, bubble away, um, give oxygen to the heterotrophic um, microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and other little fellas, and they will break down that organic waste and releasing inorganic elements, which is what plants take up. How I'll be running it is every week, as I need to put more water in, obviously if it's full, I couldn't. So what I'll do is I'll turn this off, let the water settle so it becomes clear, and I will draw off to that line there. Uh, that line there is actually a pipe and as you can see there's a little bit of a screen on that, uh, more on that later. And I can decant the water down to the buckets, let it settle again if there's any more solids in there. And then that clean mineral rich water can go into the grow beds uh, to feed the plants. Uh, basically closing the loop one step further trying to reuse all the minerals that are provided by the fish in their solids waste. I mean I was using them before but just in a different part of the patch. I think from the level that's in there at the moment it'll take four weeks to fill it up. So that first batch in there will be mineralizing for about a month. Obviously it gets mixed every time some more stuff goes in. I'll let it settle on that fourth week, decant the water, pop in the bed and then put fresh sludge in there. So there won't be a full 28 to 40 days um, mineralization for all the solids in there. But after a while, yeah, you get the picture. It will be breaking down enough to um, feed the plants up in the system. Now, um, just to show you that uh, it's not a nitrate um, issue because you know the plants, uh, the fish aren't being fed a lot. I did a test earlier and as you can see, my nitrates are still off the chart. There we go, there's a better comparison, well over 160 parts per million. So uh, there's definitely a nutrient bank in the system, just not what we need. And just to show you it's not iron, 
If you look down in there, we're close to two parts per million in iron. So I don't think there's an iron deficiency and I'm fairly sure that there's enough magnesium in there because I've put in a fair bit of the Epsom salts. Um, so magnesium sulfate, so there should be more than enough magnesium in there. I was speaking to a few people helping me out. Matthias has helped me out with some um, brewer ideas and Steve Dredd from Potent Ponics has helped me out as well. And he suggested that if I added some molybdenum and also some manganese, I may, that may help clear up some of the intervenial chlorosis. But in saying that, and he understands this, we don't test our water as much as you folks in the States do. Mainly because, um, yeah, testing is a little bit more expensive here. So it's something I'm, yeah, I haven't been doing regularly. So it might be something I do just out of curiosity now. Um, send a sample up and then add the manganese and the molybdenum. And I know I'm not pronouncing that right. And um, yeah, then send a sample up in a couple of weeks time just to see if they boost those levels. Um, one thing the the, um, the mineralizer does do from what reports I've seen people like Matthias post in Aquaponics Anonymous is it does tend to boost things like potassium, uh, uh, not sorry, not potassium, phosphate. A lot of the phosphate will be locked up in the organics and goes out normally, um, but I've never really had a phosphate issue um, in the system. So obviously there's enough suspended in the water, but it would be good to reclaim as much as we can and keep it in the grow beds. Um, so yeah, that's um, pretty much well where we're up to on the nutrient side of things. Uh, one of the other things I've done to combat um, the lack of nutrients is to take out the eggplant, which you folks saw in a clip the other week. And there's another eggplant, same variety over there, so I'm not too worried about that. The other thing I did the other day was trim this tomato back a lot. Uh, obviously there is enough phosphate and potassium in there because there are a load of fruit set, more flowers setting. And in fact, I can show you a uh, semi-ripe tomato to give you an idea of what they look like. So that's one thing we did, um, just removing some of those plants. Another thing is to chop back this chili here. Uh, it was rather large indeed. So I took all the fruit off yesterday and I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with them. Maybe turn them into a bit of a sauce um, or maybe just freeze them for meals down the track and reduce the plant basically to one stem. The reason I left that one on is because we have a climbing bean growing up it. So I thought I'd just leave one branch just to see if it um, survives through winter and yeah, more foliage will come on in spring. If not, uh, one of the fruit dropped down here. So we have a load of little seedlings that have popped up. Plus I also have another one down the back. I don't know if you can make out the little orange fruit down there, but it's got loads of fruit on it as well. So yeah, hopefully uh, reducing the demand um, from the plant, um, chopping them back will also help uh, with those deficiencies in the system. Um, ideally, what I would have is a solar heater uh, that would have a separate pump taking water from the sump through a coil of black pipe and then feed it back in. That would keep the water temperature up. I only have it running through the day, obviously, because it's a solar heater. That would keep the water temperature up for the fish and that would mean they would feed more readily through winter, put on more weight, uh, faster to harvest and also keep the plants healthier. So uh, that's something we'll look at um, next winter. For now though, we're still um, sorting out the rest of um, backfilling retaining walls and that sort of thing. Uh, by the way, uh, for you folks who have been following us for a while, the new aquaponics area has been marked out. I'll just move the hose out of the way. But what we're looking at, um, the top corner uh, is coming out from the fence, uh, probably around about four meters. And then down here, you might be able to see this little peg down there. Just with a little bit of yellow wrapped around it. That is where the, uh, the end of the um, aquaponics shelter will be, roughly six meters. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of coming out on a bit of an angle as you look this way. That's because that's how the fence on this side runs. So Bianca and I are now rethinking how we've set up the shade area and how we're going to finish off the landscaping down the back here, whether we um, try and build up the soil level further into the garden. So just to let you know, that is why I haven't gone gung-ho sorting out the veggie patch, because I don't want to have to set it all up just to pull it all down again if we change our minds. We need to see, you know, basically how the land is going to lay. Now we have the new retaining walls in. Oh, just to give you a look, I have a very nice crop of cracky hydroponic uh, bok choy on as well. And a few anomalies like tomatoes growing out of an IBC full of rock. 
But enough of that. Back to the aquaponics here. Uh, due to the malfunctions earlier and that pump blowing up and the camera not being pressed to record, I will post a video down the line on how I'm moving the, the solids from there over to the mineralization. And I'll show you, I'll wait until I've got enough solids in there to do camp back over to show you the whole process. But yeah, just thought I'd give you a bit of a look. Um, I really do need to thank a couple of people. Matthias over on Aquaponics Anonymous. Um, he's helped me for years on different problems and issues with the system. Thank you very much for allowing me to pick your brains, Matthias. Link to his group down in the uh, description. Also need to thank um, Steve Dredd from Growing With Fishes. Um, he's helped me out with a, a few of the nutrient issues. Uh, he's been um, looking into the nutrients far longer than myself and um, yeah, saw that I was having a few issues and um, yeah, gave me a couple of suggestions there. So thank you very much to everyone who has helped out. And also uh, thanks to you folks who keep coming along and sussing out these videos once I post them to the channel. Really do appreciate it. Uh, quick heads up, I will have a guide coming out very soon. I gave the folks over on our supporters uh, page uh, on our hangout yesterday a little bit of a sneak peek. Uh, just um, how it works and the functionality and how it will help you folks who are into aquaponics uh, basically um, run your system a little bit smoother if you're after a bit of information. Uh, the beauty of the guide is anything that I want to add to it from now on in. So as I get the uh, mineralization dialed in, I can pass that information on to the people who create the guide and they can add it into the guide at a later date. So it is one guide that will just keep evolving as time goes, as I learn new things. Um, so that information will be right there for those folks who decide to make the purchase. So yeah, more on that later on down the line. Um, as I mentioned, the supporters, thank you very much to those folks who turned up to the Hangout yesterday. And thanks to those folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and the Farm Your Own Yard page. I really do appreciate it. Uh, very sorry that I had the malfunctions this morning, but yeah, next time we look at the mineralization, it will be a more thorough um, look at how the system is set up and how I'm going to run it. But I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope you folks are well and happy, and I will catch you next vid. Cheers, folks. Happy growing.